module is going to focus in on health information technology and informatics. So we'll go ahead and get started with the four categories that we're going to focus in on when we talk about health information technology and informatics. The first one is going to be clinical information systems. Uh, clinical information systems exist and were designed to help support patient care delivery across the continuum and help with our clinical decision making for different types of clinicians like our physicians, our nurses, respiratory therapists, anybody involved in patient care delivery. Um, they're going to include things like our electronic medical records, which we're going to talk about in just a second. And all of these IT applications that are contained within uh, medical informatics were uh, created and designed to help improve clinical efficiency across the continuum, focusing in on accuracy and reliability for patient care. The second type of category that we'll focus in on is administrative information systems. Um, administrative information systems are designed to help an organization carry out any types of financial and administrative support functions that they need to carry out uh, as part of a, a business structure. So these are going to be things like your payroll, um, how we bill and code to the patient and the insurance, um, anything financial or administrative related. The third type of category that we'll discuss is our decision support systems. Uh, you can think of decision support systems as analytical tools that help us to make managerial decisions. Uh, so how do we staff for our department? Um, how do we staff for patient flow? How do we budget for our department for the next upcoming fiscal year? All these would be considered decision support systems. And the final category is Internet and eHealth. Now, Internet and eHealth are applications that have been created to help enable access to information for patient and provider alike. And they help to uh, facilitate that patient-provider interaction. So when we talk about Internet and eHealth e a little later on, we're going to focus in on telehealth and telemedicine and how those two programs or those two concepts help to facilitate uh, virtual visits between the patient and the provider and open up access for the patient in that manner. So let's lay the foundation down first and talk about electronic health records, which hopefully most of you are familiar with. Now there's been some research done out there in regards to electronic health records, particularly when they were starting to show up in the, in the health marketplace, um, that showed electronic medical records enable more timely access to medical records when you compare it to your paper-based charts, uh, which is how we used to keep up with patient records. Um, and it also shows that uh, electronic health records help to alert physicians to potential medical errors that could exist. So let's say you have a patient that's allergic to penicillin and you have a provider that wants to prescribe penicillin to that patient. Um, the provider may not see that allergy noted in a paper-based chart, but in an electronic medical record, the, e the EHR would push through um, an alert to the, to the provider letting them know that the patient is allergic to penicillin and to not prescribe that medication. So it helps avoid different types of medical errors that could potentially occur. And it also makes critical lab results available quicker to our providers so that they, continue the, so that they can continue with the continuum of care for our patients. Now for our EHRs, there are four basic components that you need to be aware of. The first one is uh, the collection and storage of health information on our individual patients that exist within our system. Um, Paper-based charts can lead to a little bit of error when we're trying to collect health information. Um, we may see duplication in there. Uh, we may see fields that are missed in regards to patient information collection, and you don't really uh, see that with electronic health records and electronic medical records because of the nature of their setup. Now the second type of component that we see within electronic health records is the access to information by authorized users. So when you think about paper-based charts, um, anybody, physician, uh, nurse or not, can come by and pick up a paper paper-based chart and read all the personal information of any patient that we have within the system. So the benefit of the electronic health record is, is that you have to have certain and special credentials given to you to be able to log in to see an individual's record 
uh, in their individual health record. Not everybody that works in a health system has access to a, a health record. Um, and it's usually confined just to the patient care team for the duration of the patient's stay in the facility. The third type of uh, component that we're going to discuss is the provision that exists for knowledge and decision support uh, to really work to enhance the quality and safety of care that's given to our patients and focus in on the efficiency of patient care through health informatics. Now the fourth type of component that we'll talk about is the improvement in health of healthcare processes and how, how EHRs help to facilitate interdisciplinary uh, team-based care models for our patients, making sure that each person on the patient care team is up to date with the most up-to-date knowledge uh, so that we're all on the same page with what's going on with our patient. Now EHRs, electronic health records, and EMRs, electronic medical records, they're both great um, and they have a lot of opportunity to help us with efficiency and quality of care for our, for our patients. Um, it helps to connect our providers, it offers better communication, um, it's more efficient, like I said, for uh, consumers and our providers, but is it really that simple and can we really overall haul the system that quickly? So, And the question we really need to start asking ourselves is how do we start to balance advancing medical technology, uh, which we know is one of the characteristics of our U.S. health system, with cost containment and keep that all in check with cost quality and access. So the U.S. as a whole really lags behind other countries when it comes to the adoption of health information technology um, and health information management. Uh, we existed on a paper-based system uh, almost since the inception of our healthcare system in this country, but what are the issues that exist with paper-based systems? We have efficiency issues, we have quality of care issues, our records go missing. Think about doctor's handwriting, for example. Uh, you know, that's the running joke, but what, uh, what do you see with medical handwriting in a record? You can misinterpret something, you can misspell something, you cannot read another person's handwriting. Um, so all these errors kind of necessitated our need to move towards a more electronic-based system that we need to use in our healthcare system. Um, what also facilitated this was a report that came out from the Institute of Medicine, or the IOM, called Crossing the Quality Chasm. Uh, the IOM in this report said there are six things patients want in their healthcare. Uh, and these seem rather simple, but it took this report to kind of put this issue of quality of care on stage for our country as a whole. So there's six things that patients want and the IOM uses this acronym to help remember those six things. S-T-E-E-E-P. Patients want care that is safe, timely, efficient, equitable, effective, and patient-centered. Uh, just like all of us, we want these things in our health care and we expect these things in our health care. Um, and how we can learn from the errors of our paper-based system really called for an improvement in our information management system when it comes to health care. Now there's a couple of terms that I want to make sure that we clarify because they are used interchangeably but they are different. Uh, the first one is health information technology and how that compares to health information management. Now you may hear these used interchangeably, but we're going to discuss the differences between the two. So in health information technology, you can think of this more of the tools that we use in healthcare. So these are going to be things like our hardware, software, our security, data storage, any tools that we use um, are going to be considered health information technology. Now, health information management, you can think of those as our systems. Uh, so things like our records, coding, administration, compliance, policy, all these would be considered systems within our health information management structure. So health information technology, more tools, health information management, more systems. Now when they come together, kind of here in the middle, they create what we call health informatics. And health informatics is um, the application or the cross-section of technology tools and information systems in our, in our healthcare setting or in our healthcare context. 
A few other terms to make sure to clarify and important to make sure you have a good understanding of are electronic medical records and how those compare with electronic health records. Now these two again, just like HIM and HIT, are used interchangeably, but they are two separate entities. Um, electronic medical records, uh, you can see, are contained within the electronic health record. So the electronic medical record, you can think of those as digital versions of your paper chart that used to exist. So when you go into the facility, you used to have a paper chart that the physician or the nurse would carry around with them, and now that paper chart has been made electronic and is called your electronic medical records. Uh, the positives to using an electronic medical record is it's very good at tracking and monitoring data over time. So if you're trying to watch your cholesterol, for example, if you're in the hospital, we can see any trends that exist with cholesterol. We can see when you uh, have higher cholesterol, lower cholesterol, and start to see if there's any kind of trend or anything that creates uh, the reason that you would have high cholesterol versus low cholesterol but there are some negatives that exist with electronic medical records and one of those are is that it's limited just to your clinician's office so they can't share that information freely there's no uh, free information exchange that exists it exists just within that system that's used in your clinician's office or that system that's used within your hospital system now the EHR, the electronic health record, encompasses the EMR, so the EMR is contained within the EHR. The electronic health record really helps to give us a broader view of patient care and it extends beyond a specific organization. So we have more information among all our providers, so there's more uh, free information exchange within the electronic health record structure. So let's talk about a few of the benefits of the electronic health record. Um, one of those is going to be, we mentioned earlier, catching and flagging potential problems. Um, so we gave you the example of the medication error that could exist that your electronic health record could flag you to. Um, it can also alert you to any overdue preventive health services that you may need. So for women, you know, it can alert you to the last time you had a mammogram. Um, and these different types of preventative health services that you may need. It can also track data over time, which is a, of a huge benefit if you're trying to find trends um, over time and you can monitor patient progress around different targets. So if we have a patient that, let's say, needs to lose 100 pounds, we can monitor their progress towards that target over time. And if we start to see kind of an up and down in their weight, we can see what is uh, causing that up and down movement. Um, probably one of the biggest benefits um, is the consumer engagement and empowerment that it creates. Uh, it allows individuals to work to start really participating in their own health management. Um, instead of being a, a bystander in your healthcare now, you can take an active role in what's going on. You can know what your lab results are, how they're interpreted, um, and start to get a better picture of your overall health. Uh, aside from the consumer empowerment piece, the next biggest benefit, in my opinion, would be the coordination of care. Um, from a patient's perspective, you start to see a decrease in duplications of tests, so you start to see a decrease in lab, lab tests that are needed, MRI, CTs, um, you start to see pop-ups for potential medication interactions and how each medicine kind of plays off each other one. And you have a, a smoother transition in care at discharge, so there's a lot less confusion on what to do when it comes time to discharge you from a facility. And all of these different uh, benefits, the uh, flagging of the potential problems, the data tracking over time, the consumer empowerment, and the coordination of care ultimately are going to lead to an improvement in quality of care for our patients. The High Tech Act really worked to help move uh, health information technology or HIT forward in our healthcare delivery system model. So it helped to improve uh, quality, safety, and efficiency overall. 
Uh, it set up something called the Office of the National Coordination for Health Information Technology, or the ONC, and we'll discuss that in just a second. Um, in addition, it created the use of adopted health information standards and the application of health information technology in our system. Um, it created something called Meaningful Use that came out of the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services as an incentive program for providers and organizations alike to start con to convert over to electronic medical records. And it gave technical assistance through our regional extension centers. So like we just said, the High Tech Act helped to create the ONC, or the Office of the National Coordinator for Health Information Technology. Now you can think of the ONC as a repository for everything health information related. Um, so with there's, there's so many moving pieces that exist within the system right now, the job of the ONC is to kind of be the broker or the conduit to help continue to move this electronic uh, health information technology structure forward. So think of it almost as the place to go for information that you need related to health informatics. So the other component of the High Tech Act that we're going to discuss is the concept of meaningful use. Now meaningful use is a program that uh, was created by Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services or CMS as an incentive program uh, to get uh, organizations and providers to start using electronic medical records. And what Meaningful Use is really asking is, are you using the electronic medical record in a way that is improving outcomes and engaging your patients in their health care? So early on, CMS comes up and says, if you agree to sign up and use Meaningful Use, then we as CMS will pay you an incentive to off offset the upfront costs for you uh, because it's not easy and it's not cheap to start setting up to use an electronic medical record system. Uh, now meaningful use uh, to be in compliance you have to use a certified electronic health record and that technology that you're using has to demonstrate that it uh, improves quality safety and efficiency and reduces health disparities across your patient population it works to engage patients and the family in care it helps to improve care coordination and population and public health overall and maintain privacy and security of your uh, protected and patient health information. So ultimately, it was hoped that meaningful use compliance would eventually result in uh, better clinical outcomes for our patients, improve population health outcomes, increase transparency and efficiency for our patients, empowering uh, our individuals and community members and patients in their own health care, and giving us more robust research data on health systems so that we can continue to design programs um, that are going to be beneficial to our community and our patients overall. Now there's four components of meaningful use. The first one is going to be adopting and using a certified EMR system. Um, so you're going to have to upgrade, upgrade your current system and utilize the functionality of that EMR. So if you're wanting to demonstrate meaningful use and that you are adhering to meaningful use, you're going to have to show progress within these different components. So like I said, the first one, adopting and using a certified EMR. The second one, how are you capturing data for reimbursement and measurement purposes? Um, knowing that data you capture today is going to affect your reimbursement tomorrow. Uh, not only do you have to be able to capture data, but how are you moving data between other systems? What's the interoperability of, of your EMR or your EHR system? Um, and how does that help to work with coordination and transition of care for your patients? And the last component that we'll discuss is your report to CMS uh, on meaningful use. And it's required and expected that you report clinical data to CMS and the different registries that exist out there. So let's focus for a second in on telemedicine and e-health. Um, telemedicine works to utilize integrated applications of uh, telecommunications and different types of information technology. 
but it's faced several barriers um, in its history, including licensure of physicians to be able to use telemedicine um, and communicate with other providers across state lines. There's also concerns about legal liability. Uh, you know, who, who holds the liability for patient care if you have two physicians that are working with each other. Um, a lot of insurance companies will not reimburse for uh, telemedicine uh, and that type of virtual visit, so there's a lack of reimbursement that exists with telemedicine. And really there's some question to its overall cost effectiveness because it can be expensive to set up a telemedicine system um, and we're, there's not really defined, uh, or it's questionable rather, if there's a good return on your investment uh, for your setup in telemedicine. So let's talk for a minute uh, the overall impact that technology has on a couple different aspects of patient care and our health system as a whole. Let's start with the quality of care, talking about technology um, and understanding that uh, technology, just because you use technology does not always mean that it's going to lead to a high quality of care. We see the United States compared to other countries across the world, we still rank low on the lower end in terms of quality of care, but we have implemented uh, electronic medical records, we've implemented all this technology into our system, so it doesn't always equal out that if you integrate technology that you're going to have a higher quality of care, it's how that technology is being used within your system. Um, so it is really only going to produce quality care when we achieve certain outcomes. Now innovations in technology in terms of quality of care may actually be more wasteful if they do not improve quality overall for our patients and some can actually cause harm for our patients. But there are some benefits to technology in terms of quality of care so we can increase the safety of treatment for our patients. Um, we can work to minimize some side effects. We have faster recovery time so uh, our patients are not having to stay in the hospital as long. Um, and we can add to the overall life expectancy and quality of life for our population as a whole. Now when we look to the quality of life uh, in terms of how technology impacts that and impacts the patient's overall satisfaction uh, looking at during and after their medical treatment, um, a lot of patients have a, a better quality of life because they're, they're able to do things in spite of their disablement so they can manage their chronic conditions without having an overwhelmingly large impact on their quality of life. Some get relief from pain and suffering they may be experiencing. Uh, they have faster recovery time and can return to more of the normal functions of everyday life. Now, healthcare uh, costs and how technology is related to that, we actually do see a cost increase. Uh, because we do have to train and hire specialized people for these special skills that's used for technology. Um, we have a lot of money poured into research and development and we can only really utilize it when it's covered by insurance, uh, which creates a moral hazard overall. Now let's think about access and how uh, technology can be beneficial in terms of access to our patients. Um, so our geographic access can be overwhelmingly in improved. We can uh, go mobile with our healthcare and do more mobile health clinics with mobile equipment. Uh, we have better improved communication technologies. Uh, think about remote access and how we have this simple, uh, centralized equipment and specialized personnel that use it. Um, we can have people remotely access this equipment to open up and provide care to our patients. And then our structures and processes, um, we're seeing a huge transformation in our medical centers. Um, we're seeing more of a shift to outpatient services as we advance in technology. We're not needing to stay in the hospital as long. Um, you can have a surgery done same day and it be an outpatient surgery and not need to stay in the hospital for care. So patients are able, as we said earlier, to get back to their activities of daily living. 
Um, and we can also take this technology into patient homes so that they can get the care that they need in the comfort of their own home. But with all these great benefits, there are some challenges that we need to discuss with um, technology overall. So some concerns uh, that we see consist around three main categories, data standards, privacy standards, and interoperability. Um, data standards, when we look at the data standards, because we are in a market-based system, we're decentralized as a healthcare system in the United States, we don't have one singular vendor or company that we go to for EMRs and EHRs. There's literally thousands of different types of software out there, different types of EMRs and EHRs, different types of technology. So we have multiple vendors, and with multiple vendors is going to come a lack of standardization. There's no one set criteria that each vendor has to follow. And each organization can work with a vendor to customize an EMR and an EHR to suit their needs. So there's no standard, standardization across the continuum. Then when we look at privacy standards, which is probably one of the biggest ones we need to focus on, um, how do we work to protect not only patient health information, but hospital and practice information? And in regards to information, when we when we're trying to protect it, who really owns the information? Does the hospital own it? Does the vendor own it? Does the patient own it? So there's a little a blurry line on where the information really rests with. And then inter interoperability, uh, when we talk about interoperability, we're talking about how the systems communicate with each other. And we have systems that simply do not talk to each other, for lack of a better term. So you may have one hospital system that incorporates four different systems to be able to track and provide patient care, and none of those systems talk to each other. So they may have an electronic medical record, then they may have a medication administration program, then they may have some type of data tracking program, and none of those three programs can really share information with each other that can lead to a couple, uh, couple issues. And again, going back to data standards, uh, when you think about interoperability, we have multiple different vendors that are competing with each other. Um, so they don't want their programs to talk between each other because that takes away the competition. So there's a couple of challenges just to think about. Um, we'll go ahead and end here with health information technology and pick up at the next module.